Late summer in northern Michigan, the Queen Anne's Lace is unfurling along the roadsides, and in a nearby wetland, the Joe Pye weed smiles into the sky. September gives way to October, and the hardwood forests turn burnt orange and flaming red. Botanist Leanna May explains that the study and documentation of such seasonal changes in plants and animals is called phenology. Phenology is essentially the study of the seasonal rhythms of life on Earth. So it is how plants and animals respond to climate, which is a combination of temperature and precipitation, and also photo periods. The National Phenology Network says a phenophase is an observable stage or phase of the annual life cycle of a plant or animal, with a distinct beginning and end. Every fall, the leaves of our northern hardwood trees turn color and release in the wind. Each spring, the shoots of new growth push out from the buds of shrubs and trees, and soon the lilacs burst into flower. That's a phenophase. But why does phenology matter? From year to year, since I'm doing these plant surveys every two weeks, um, I was curious to know what plant species are blooming at what time so I could better plan my surveying protocol. And then I thought, well, are they blooming at the same time each year? How much does that change from year to year? And is this something that's gonna change greatly under climate change scenarios? So I started becoming interested in recording that first blooming point of each plant species as I find them throughout the, the growing season. Leanna works in northwest lower Michigan, identifying and documenting plant species and communities found in land preserves to help inform the management of important habitat and ecosystems. Here's how Matt Hyman, director of land programs at Leelanau Conservancy, explains it. Uh, her quantitative uh, analysis of the uh, floristic communities available at, at our natural areas has been extremely informative for both our current management plans and will, as well as uh, helping us uh, have a, a baseline index to uh, analyze potential changes over time. Because there's a close connection between climate and the key life cycle events in plants, changes in phenology are being used as indicators of climate change. For example, studies led by Professor Mark Schwartz have shown that lilacs and honeysuckle bushes leaf out an average of four to eight days earlier than they did just a few decades ago in the Midwest. Under climate change scenarios, we are seeing that the timing of the different phenophases is shifting. Since every organism is affected differently by different phenological cues, so some organisms respond to photo period, some organisms respond to precipitation, and some organisms respond to temperature, or different combinations thereof, it's very difficult to predict how they'll respond to climate change. Changes in the climate are already raising concerns for the Leelanau Conservancy. Matt explains there's a potential mismatch between plant flowering and pollinating insects. For instance, specifically in the spring, a very drastic warm-up that wouldn't typically be felt at that time of year. Plants are often able to respond faster than insects uh, just because of the biological nature of the plant versus uh, insects needing to often go through life history stages before they reach an adult and just also often taking longer to uh, for an insect to react to weather as compared to a plant can open up and can break bud uh, within seven to eight days of having a significant weather pattern shift even shorter in some cases. Leanna raises another habitat management concern arising from the phenology of invasive plants. Invasive species are notoriously adaptable so non-native species often are seen to have a strong response to temperature causing them to leaf out earlier in the spring. One example is Japanese barberry. It's an invasive understory shrub. As the temperature warms in the spring, the Japanese barberry is able to readily open its leaves in response to these warming, these warming spring days while the native plants are more delayed. They don't have as strong of a response to temperature so they leaf out later. This essentially creates a new phenological niche in which the, the barberry is able to take advantage of, but the native species are not. As our climate continues to change, an understanding of phenology appears to be increasingly important 
to all of us who care about the natural resources of Northwest Lower Michigan. Yeah, the Conservancy very much cares about the uh, diversity of all of our native plants and animals within the county uh, and maintaining as high a diversity as possible. Uh, and then to the extent that we're able to document the shifts in the diversity and abundance of various species as they occur over time, we are certainly aware that we are under a changing climate and being able to document those shifts as they occur will not only inform us as to what's going on around us, it'll also help us prepare for management uh, activities and regimes that can help buffer against that uh, and uh, slow the rate of change and or just help certain species adapt.